welcome to um, our uh, session, What the Tech, uh, which is a spotlight on technician and technologist roles at Seattle Children's. I am Shauna Robkin. I am with the Workforce Development and Planning Team at Seattle Children's, and we have some uh, fabulous team members here uh, today to share a little bit about what they do at Children's. Um, so before I uh, turn things over to these awesome subject matter experts first, I thought maybe we'd just start with a little context setting. Um, so why tech roles? Why are we even talking about that today? And there are several reasons. Um, one is that there's really a lot of demand for these positions at Seattle Children's, um, and in fact, at many healthcare organizations across the region. Um, also, these are positions that provide a starting point to start working in healthcare and to really grow and advance and develop a career over time. Uh, and finally, these are um, strategic entry points because they often typically require two years or less of education um, in order to be qualified to get started working in these, in these areas. Um, there are a lot of different tech roles. Uh, today, we're gonna focus on three in particular, uh, including surgical technologist, pharmacy technician, and radiology technologist. Um, but as I said, there's certainly many more that you could look into after this session if, you, if your interest is, uh, is piqued. Um, so just a high level level set, um, what, what are these roles at a very high level? Uh, surge techs um, work directly with surgeons and nurses to provide patients with the care and support they need during surgery. Um, they prepare supplies and instruments, maintain the sterile surgical field, perform scrub functions and collect specimens taken during the surgical procedure. Farm techs provide technical support and assistance to pharmacy staff, including preparing prescriptions, controlling inventory, providing customer service, and performing data entry and record keeping. And finally, radiology techs perform a variety of diagnostic tests and procedures. They use fixed and portable equipment uh, and they adjust and control that equipment to optimally image the area of interest and maintain general condition and readiness of the work area. So that's just a little context setting. Um, if after this presentation you want to learn a little more, we wanted to share that there are some short videos on careerbridge.law.gov, and there are links in this presentation to those videos and other resources, and we'll make sure you know where to find this presentation before we end today. Uh, so with that, I wanted to um, transition to a little show and tell. I, we mentioned in the last slide that uh, rad techs use fixed and portable imaging equipment. Um, and I want to turn it over to Asa to tell us a little bit about what this work is, is, uh, is like in the day to day. For sure. Thank you, Shauna. So yeah, so I think uh, our, our job has too many prim two primary aspects to it is the, the patient care side and then the equipment side. So both are super fun and both of those are the reasons why I got into position in the first place. Um, so we deal with a lot of really fun kind of cutting edge technology. And so we use that to get the best images possible for our doctors so they can provide the highest quality of care possible to our providers, uh, I mean, to our, to our patients. Um, so over here on the, uh, on the leftmost side of the screen, that's a, that's a fluoroscopy tower. And so fluoroscopy is where you, you have the patient either drink a contrast or a contrast is put in them through another means. And we watch that contrast uh, show up as different colors on the actual x-ray themselves. And we can watch as it goes through their, through their body system. So sometimes if we have them drink it, you can see it go into their stomach and then out their small intestine, all the way through their small intestines, all the way into the large intestine. And uh, we just watch it go through, watch all that anatomy get, get displayed and, and just brighten up. Uh, the middle picture here is, uh, is a portable device. So we run around the hospital and we go to pretty much every single part of the hospital you can think of. Um, and we, we take these, these images that are, that are kind of still images instead of the live, the live x-rays as the, as the previous one on fluoroscopy. We take still images of different body parts, could be any body part whatsoever. Could be could be your your head, your chest, could be your extremities, your arms and legs, um, and we're looking for for all sorts of things. It could be uh, broken bones. I mean, that's that's the most obvious one. It could be um, some sort of pathology, something going wrong within the within the lungs or within the abdomen. Um, it could be we're looking for the placement of uh, of certain devices that the that surgeons may place inside the body. 
So we, we, we use it for everything that you can think of. And then on the right-hand side is, um, is our CT machine here downstairs in the, uh, the emergency department in the hospital. And so CT uses, uh, uses X-ray in a way that actually makes a 3D image of the body part in question. And it, it takes a continuous scan all the way around that body part. And so you're able to do something called 3D reconstructions and, and get the 3D body part actually displayed and you can spin it around and you can look at it from all different angles. And it's, it's pretty cool and pretty cool to see. So, and then we also have not displayed here, we have um, stuff that we do in the, in the OR. So we have portable, portable, portable machines that we use during OR, OR cases. Um, Mark can definitely tell you more about how the actual OR functions. Um, and then we have the fixed rooms where you just do plain old x-ray like the portable machine, but um, in a fixed room itself. So the patients come to us instead of us going to them. So just a few options about, um, about x-ray techs and a little bit about CT tech over here on the right. But yeah, that's the, that's the basics of what we do. Lots of fun technology. Cool. Thanks for sharing, Asa. And I, I neglected to introduce Asa, uh, Asa McDonald, who is a supervisor uh, in diagnostic radiology and um, is uh, uh, one of our, um, our uh, very um, uh, active participants in helping uh, create awareness about opportunities in this field in the community. So we appreciate you being here, Asa. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank and thank you to everybody here too. Yeah, and we'll get a chance to ask him some questions if you have some, so, so feel free to put questions in the chat or hang on to those if you wanna save those for the end. Um, and in the meantime, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Mark Martin, who is a surgical technologist too uh, at Seattle Children's. And um, Mark, maybe you can uh, introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about some of the images here on the screen uh, in, the, in the surgical tech space. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Martin. I'm a certified surgical technologist. I have been for uh, 13 years, I suppose. Um, it's a career that I found later in life. Um, what you're seeing there is um, actually the, the, the photo on the left is somebody who's preparing to uh, start surgery. So they're just setting up. And you see that uh, that's what we call the back table there that they're standing in front of and getting all their instruments and getting everything in order. And then that down at the kind of the bottom where you see those green light handles, that's their Mayo stand. That'll be over the patient. And those are the instruments that they'll be handing directly to the surgeon and his assistant as they're working. Um, the other two photos are, as that's what you see there, is the Mayo stand over the patient. And um, that's what they're doing. They're assisting the surgeon. You know, I've thought a lot about uh, surgical technologists and, um, you know, how we, how we became. And it, it really occurs to me that this is our job as, sur as surgical technologists really uh, is, used to be the job of the nurse, the OR nurse. Uh, and that job has now been split. That was such a big job, the OR nurse. It's been split into two pieces. One is still the, the OR nurse, but she functions more as what we call a circulating nurse now. She's our, our gateway from the sterile field to the non-sterile world. And then there's the surgical technologist, and that's the, the, the person that sets up all of the sterile instrumentation and then assists the surgeon uh, with, with the actual procedure. Um, one of the biggest uh, responsibilities to the surgical technologist, as it is for the nurse in the room and, and everybody else, everybody's there for the patient, but, but we're there to, to uh, as, as a representative for the patient. We're there looking out for them. So our, one of the biggest parts of our job is to main, maintain sterility, um, watch everybody else on the team, make sure everybody's doing the things that they're supposed to do and calling them out when they don't. Um, and then main, making sure that everything stays sterile throughout the procedure. And sometimes that can be difficult because some of these procedures are long. But um, that's what we're there. We're there. We're there to advocate for our patients, um, as are so many other members of the team in the room. Um, surgical technology is an amazing career. Like I said, I've been doing it for 13 years now. There's not a day that goes by that I don't learn something. Um, and you know, it's, it's very funny. I'll tell you a very quick story, and then I'll shut up. 
Uh, I walked into the into this morning to start my day, and I always sit down in the break room for a minute and have a cup of coffee before I get into my green scrubs and join the team. And somebody looked at me this morning and says, it's a pleasure to see somebody smiling. And I didn't even realize I was smiling. But it's an amazing feeling to come to work every day and smile and be happy to be somewhere. And, you know, after 13 years, I still feel that way. I'm very passionate about what I do. And, um, and this, this career has allowed me to feel that way. So I hope some of you will find some interest in it as well. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, and that really speaks to two important things about, I think, working in healthcare. And one is that it's challenging work, and it's pretty challenging right now, maybe in a way that it's never been before. And it's also incredibly rewarding. And I think to be at this sort of um, sort of juncture in in life right now, with all the different ways in which the, the sort of life has turned upside down, and all the stressors that come along with that, to be in a place where you feel like your um, work is rewarding and gratifying and that you can make a difference, that's a pretty special thing. And that's a pretty special thing to experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you for sharing that. And I will just share, uh, Ray Gomez, who is a supervisor in our outpatient pharmacy, was hoping to be here today. And uh, at the last minute got called into some other, um, other duties. And so is not able to be here. And so I'll just share that, um, as mentioned on the previous slide, that there are the pharmacy technician role is really um, a, a managing a, a variety of different things in our, in our pharmacy space. And in Seattle Children's, we actually have both inpatient and outpatient pharmacy. So you can think of outpatient pharmacy as sometimes thought of as retail, right? Like if you go to your CVS or to your Bartels or your Rite Aid to pick up a prescription, there's a pharmacy in that space that's right in your community. Um, and that is, we have sort of a version of that inside our hospital in a few of our locations, which is you might come from an appointment or be discharged from the hospital and you need to go get, see, a, see, a, see somebody on the way out to get a prescription. Um, but as you can imagine, people are staying in our hospital for a variety of reasons for, for some time. And even perhaps um, Mark may have seen them in surgery and they're going to stick around for a little bit. Uh, and they might need some medication um, during that time. And so our inpatient pharmacists are working kind of all the time with patients and families. And um, those farm techs are really helping, as you can see in this picture, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. Inventory is super critical. It needs to be organized. We need to know what we have and where to find it. Um, and then there's also the preparation of prescriptions and medication. And then there's that customer service, right? Just interacting with patients and families uh, to make sure that they understand what they're taking um, what their medication is and how to take it safely and effectively. Um, so that's just one more role that we wanted to highlight. Um, and I also wanted to share that um, uh, just on this slide, I shared uh, at the beginning, we talked about the fact that these roles, um, which are sort of in these middle bubbles here, can be an opportunity to, to, to start working in and advance your career over time. And this is just a little segment of what pathways might look like, right? Like you might come directly into one of these roles. You might start in a role that doesn't require any specialty education, um, but maybe just assumes you've had a little bit of work experience like a materials handler role um, and move into one of these uh, technician or technologist roles and then move into a, um, as Asa mentioned, um, mentioned CT scan at the beginning, right? So that's a special modality, a specialty within imaging. You might do a little bit of extra schooling to move into that. Um, or you might move into a supervisor role. Or in Mark's case, we have our um, surgical technologist. And it, with, with, when you gain a bit more experience and expertise in your skill, you can move into a surgical technologist two role and take on advanced responsibilities. Um, so there, this is just a little bit of a placeholder. If you want to come back to this deck later, you might use some of these roles to go look on our website and see where we have openings and maybe learn a little bit more about what the requirements are for those jobs. Um, and then I really want to reserve some time um, for questions that you might have, um, because I know our time is our time is together is 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 short today. Um, and so, if there are any questions that you might have for, for Mark or for Asa or generally, um, please feel free to throw those in the chat now. You can certainly come off of mute if you prefer and ask your question. Um, and uh, I will also share that there is uh, one before, um, before we leave, I want to make sure you know where to find this slide deck, because the slide deck also has um, some, some links for how to find 
some openings. Like how do you find our openings and take a look at those and learn more about those positions? It has some links to find schools in the area. So let's say you're like, you get really jazzed and you wanna find out how do I get into a surgical technologist program or a, a radiology technician pro technologist program. Um, you can find information about where the schools are, how long those programs are, how much they cost. And you might also find, inquire about doing some sort of a shadow or an observation with us if your interest is really piqued. Um, and so I wanna make sure that you can know, know that you can find this deck uh, along with all of the other decks for Seattle Children's on the Cadence platform. So if you go to the Seattle Children's sponsor page, you can find those decks there. Um, or you can also, if you just remember one of our names, you can go to our speaker profiles and you can find those decks as are loaded there um, as well. Um, so I just want, didn't want to neglect that. Um, so I will go back to this slide. And uh, if there are any questions, let us know. We're happy to answer those now. And I might, while we're waiting, if there, if people need a minute to think about what their questions are, I might ask a question of both of you. Um, and that is that as you think about your own journey, your own um, kind of career pathway, how you came to be doing what you're doing today, um, and you think back to when you, your 16 year old self, <laughs> and you think, boy, what, what would there, if, if, is there anything that you wish someone had told you when you were 16? now that you know what you know, based on where you are in your journey? Yeah, no, that's, a, that's an excellent question, Shauna. Um, I, I think just uh, mainly knowing that there's so many different opportunities out there, because initially when I was looking at, at the healthcare field, the, the obvious ones were there, that the, the doctor and the nurse and everything else was kind of unknown kind of nebulous and and I didn't realize that quite so many professions professions existed out there um so I think having having something like this for when I was when I was that age would would have been phenomenally helpful I figured out where I wanted to be eventually but it definitely took a took a second a couple different different tries before I, before I got there and I'm very happy I got here because it's been a fantastic profession. But yeah, I think I think just having as much information as possible, as early on as possible, and knowing which which areas required what kind of skills, I think would would have been fantastic. On my journey, I, I felt the same way. I felt like you know I, I actually, um, Sean, I told you this story, but I came to this career. Um, I had actually attended a a seminar about nursing. And that just sounded so overwhelming to me, especially where I was at that time in my life. I just thought, I don't know where I would find the time and the resources to accomplish all that. And then somebody actually reached out to me and said, here's a couple of jobs that we're always trying to fill. Would any of these interest you? And that's where I found surgical technology. Um, and in reading that job description, my first thought was, oh my gosh, they'll actually let me do this, which was amazing. And, um, but my journey as, as, as far as becoming surgical technologist and just the years being in several different hospitals, but the last six years at Seattle Children's is just how many people it takes to, um, to best take care of a patient and the, and the dedication of those people, um, but it, it really, I mean, they, they say they only, you know, raise a child, it takes a village to, to care for a patient. It takes a village and it takes a, a village of very specially trained, very dedicated people. Um, and it's, it's a, just a, a pleasure and a privilege to work in those, in that team, in that team environment, looking after that one, you know, one person or whatever. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a, it's quite a journey, whatever, whatever you might choose to do your journey will be amazing. And it sounds like one of the takeaways is, is be curious and check things out because the, the things that you don't know about, you might accidentally stumble through <laughs> through a door you didn't know was there um, just by asking questions or going to an info session, that kind of thing. So that's super helpful. Um, there is a question in the chat about phlebotomy and whether phlebotomy would be good practice to become, I think the question is to become a surgeon in the future. Um, so is phlebotomy something that might be, you know, a, an interesting uh, or, or a useful starting point? 
Um, I can't really speak to phlebotomy. I'm not sure. I'm not really even sure I know what, what a phlebotomist does. I believe it has to do with drawing blood. And, mm -hmm. um, but um, I think any, any experience is, um, it's all a journey. It's all, you know, it's all pathways and every step down a pathway takes you somewhere new and gets you, gets you more knowledge, more experience, more, uh, a, a bigger, a broader horizon to look at. So, um, you know, I was, I was amazed at how many people that I went to school with were already, uh, CNAs, certified nursing assistants. And, um, and, uh, and they thought that, that that experience was really helpful to them. So um, yeah. I, I believe anything, any experience that you you can put into your to your toolkit is worth having. Yeah. And I would also say that any both I would agree with that and also say that if you um, any experience that you have, like when you're working inside an organization like Seattle Children's, you have an opportunity to, um, I think, test out sort of take try things on and see if they fit for you, right? So I think something like phlebotomy is a great opportunity to sort of test out, like, do I, how do I feel about needles and blood? Like, does that actually work for me? Um, what is the sort of patient interaction or working in a care team feel like to me? What do I like about it? What's challenging for me? And it's also a way that you begin to build networks, right? And so if you have future career plans, you might have mentors that can help support you on that journey. You might find resources. For example, at Seattle Children's, we have a tuition assistance program that can assist um, with some of the costs of, of going back to school. Um, so I think, you know, something like, uh, you know, phlebotomy and many other entry points could be really a, a great way both to explore and learn about what your own uh, interests are and what the right fit is, as well as to begin to build that exposure and that network and those resources that can help support you. Ace, is there anything you would add uh, either to that question or anything else that you would like to, to add before we close out? No, I, I definitely like, I'd like to second what, what both of you said about that. Um, I have a, a classmate in x-ray school who was in phlebotomy and that was his introduction to, to the healthcare field. And then, it was a fantastic introduction because like Sean was saying, he used that to actually be able to, to connect with different people around the hospital and just on his, on his break time and on his off time and, and different areas would bring their patients down to, to get blood draws and talk to them. And that's actually how he found out about x-ray and what got him interested in it. And so having any sort of experience like Mark was saying, having any sort of experience whatsoever is going to be phenomenally useful especially on the, on the patient care side of, of hospitals and healthcare environment. But also when you're in those positions, it gives you opportunity, like Sean was saying, to, to network, to wander around and get a feel for what other positions do too. Um, it's honestly one of my favorite things to do at the hospital is to find out more about what other people do and, and not even for, for you know, a, a career change, but for my own information and then other people who are looking to get in the healthcare field, they, I've been asked before, like, what, what, what do I think would be the, the best fit for them and stuff? And I, and I have a little bit of a, a small amount of knowledge of a, of a bunch of different parts of the hospital, a bunch of different professions and can run through them and, and give them the highlights of them and kind of give a very light day in the life of them for them. And yeah, it's useful. So it's, it's a nonstop learning and that's, that's, it's, it's, yeah, every day is, every day is something new. It's fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know we're, we're a little over our scheduled time, but we also got started a little late. So I just want to uh, hold out maybe one more minute. If there are any, uh, any additional questions that we can answer for anyone. Um, and again, just to remind everyone that we do, um, you can find, the slide deck and other resources on the Cadence platform, um, and you are um, welcome to reach out if you have questions afterwards. But any final thoughts or questions we could answer now? Well, thank you so much for joining us for a little bit of time this afternoon. We hope that this was interesting uh, and thought provoking. 